Hello friends, welcome back to Azure Wada YouTube channel. We will continue with question number six. Question number six is your company Azure solution makes use of multi-factor authentication for when users are not in office. The per authentication option has been configured as the user's model after the acquisition of a smaller business and the addition of new staff to Azure Active Directory obtains a different company and adding the new employees to Azure Active Directory. You are informed that these employees should also make use of multi-factor authentication. To achieve this, the per enabled user setting must be set for the usage model. Okay, here we have a question and we do have answer as well. So we have to check is that solution is fit for this purpose or not. So <clears throat> basically we do uh, we obtain a new company and uh, the company is having staff in it and there is a multi-factor authentication requirement in uh, Azure AD for this new staff. So what, what does solution says? Let's see. You create a new a multi-factor authentication provider that's correct with a backup from uh, existing uh, multi-factor authentication provider data so uh, this seems good because um, since it is uh, not possible to change the usage model of an existing provider is it is uh, right now you have to create uh, a new one and re uh, reactivate your existing server with activation credential from the new provider so it looks uh, the correct answer so we'll tick on yes let's move to next question question number seven your company has uh, azure active directory tenant name vlan.com that is configured for hybrid coexistence with uh, on-premise active uh, directory domain you have a server name uh, uh, dir sync one that is configured as a directory sync server you uh, create a new user account okay so new user account on on premise active directory so uh, we do have setup of uh, ad and uh, azure ad and there is synchronization going on and we need to replicate this user information to azure ad immediately so uh, uh, the the clause is like that we we have to replicate this information immediately the user information immediately to azure ad uh, so let's see solution what does it suggest uh, you run the start ad sync uh, sync cycle uh, policy type initial okay uh, actually this command is correct up to this point but uh, initial is not one uh, clause for uh, updating it immediately so this answer is incorrect in that sense so we'll, uh, we'll say no let's move to question number eight question number eight is uh, same like the previous one and uh, um, there is clause the same clause which is immediately but the solution is different this time let's check the solution you use Active Directory site and services to force replication. Uh, for force replication, even uh, is not going to do the immediate uh, updation on the Azure Active Directory. Uh, so uh, on the global catalog, so uh, it's not going to work uh, with the Azure AD, and uh, this is not going to uh, have immediate update on AD. So uh, uh, the the answer for this question is uh, no as well. Let's move to next question. Again, the question number nine uh, is same like the previous one, uh, uh, and the solution is different. So uh, we keep in mind that we have to immediate the immediately update the user information in Azure AD. So the solution is given here: restart net logon service on domain controller. So it's suggesting that why don't you restart net logon services on domain controller server itself? But uh, as we know, NetLogon is a local security authority service that uh, runs in the background and it handles the domain user login uh, authentication part. It has nothing to do with the synchronization. So it will not be helpful for uh, in our case. So the answer is no. 
let's move to the question number 10 so before we move uh, to question number 10 um, uh, we were having similar question uh, 7 8 and 9 so uh, all the question were pointing to a synchronization of uh, uh, active directory and azure active directory user so uh, here uh, i'm just giving a little explanation here uh, we do have let's say for example uh, ad in on premise uh, this is one uh, on premise and uh, azure ad is on a, another side we need the synchronization uh, in on premise one we will have you know ad connect uh, service so ad connect is basically uh, maintain the synchronization uh, between active directory and uh, azure active directory so here uh, if you see there are uh, you know uh, uh, to run these actions on the connector we have this screenshot in this screenshot it is explained that how it works so we can do uh, full import uh, we can do full synchronization we can do delta import we can do delta synchronization and export so uh, <clears throat> for the previous questions we were uh, looking for the answer but none of the answer were correct uh, or solution provided uh, us were not correct but actual uh, you know answer for that is that um, in powershell we can fire this uh, command which is uh, uh, this command was there in the uh, answer but uh, delta part was missing instead of delta it was initial return so initial is not which is uh, going to do the synchronization immediately for any changes uh, so this is the correct answer for three of three uh, questions uh, and uh, a little bit explanation here the initial is uh, like you know cross reference everything in local ad and uh, office 365 or the azure ad and uh, uh, it uh, it is not an immediate synchronization so it uh, happens on uh, uh, periodical time uh, and delta is uh, one which is you know looking the changes uh, immediately and synchronizing whatever the changes occurring after the initial one so this is the explanation for these three questions 7, 8 and 9 which we uh, attended uh, and now we will move to uh, the next question, question number 10. You are configuring the two data center as geo cluster sites. So uh, geo clustered means it is having multiple region and uh, site resiliency. Okay, you need to uh, recommend a zero restore redundancy. We have to uh, look for the redundancy option you have the following data storage requirements so let's go through the requirement what we are looking for the data must be stored on multiple nodes it's it means it should be stored on different servers uh, data must be stored on nodes in separate geographical locations so it's a multiple reason basically data can be uh, read from secondary location so uh, we may have you know or we should have two reasons and first we consider uh, primary the, and the other one would be the secondary uh, as well from the primary oh, okay so what what it's saying is that both from both the uh, locations the data can be uh, readable so should be readable from both end uh, and solutions are given like the option a is geo redundant uh, storage uh, in zero redundant storage uh, we will definitely be getting multiple reason let's say uh, it, it will be like something like the reason one and uh, reason two but the only difference is that uh, this is this will be readable reason one always be readable and in uh, in the event of failure in reason one uh, re reason two will be available to read so that's not the solution because we want primary and secondary both readable all the time so this is not the answer for us As the second one is read only zero redundant storage uh, this is also the, the same solution uh, except that uh, r1 and r2 both will be readable anytime so uh, this is our answer the b is the correct answer in that case but let's see the next one what is suggest uh, zone redundant storage which is uh, uh, in multiple availability availability zones it will be readable but it is not multiple reason uh, locally redundant which is we call lrs lrs is in one data center in one availability zone only so that is also not our answer 
so b is the correct answer uh, next i am going to explain you uh, this availability zone a little bit in graphical way after this question so let's move forward so let's uh, let's understand what is uh, lrs or local uh, redundant zone so uh, in this case what is uh, uh, happening is that we do have uh, one data center so all the data is lying in uh, three copies three different servers you can assume but all um, uh, the data would remain in single data center so uh, if anything happens or anything wrong with this data center in the uh, primary region or one region uh, it's not going to serve us from the another region so this is called lrs this is the cheapest solution available so uh, this is little bit of explanation on that let's move to another one the next one is zrs zr is uh, like uh, zone redundant uh, storage so in zone redundant storage uh, we do have uh, multiple data centers in single region and uh, these are you know uh, the copies are maintained separately in three different data centers or three different availability zone so these are uh, if uh, something happens with one data center still we do have two copies available uh, but uh, all would remain in the same region so if anything happens in that region if that is not connectable to the user uh, from uh, uh, this location then it's going to give us the trouble so there is no redundancy uh, um, in terms of region but yeah uh, it is redundant for availability zone if one availability zone is out still we do have uh, two more copies to uh, uh, accessible so let's see another one uh, next one is uh, grs or uh, read uh, ra grs which means uh, it's replicable uh, between two uh, 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 two regions means three copies are being maintained on the primary region three com copies are being maintained on the secondary region and if it is uh, not uh, it's if it is only grs then uh, grs is having the feature that um, uh, the secondary is not uh, reachable uh, unless the primary is uh, you know uh, having failure so uh, in ra grs uh, ra grs we uh, can access the primary as well as secondary so that's what difference between ra grs and grs uh, let's move to next question now Question number 11. Uh, your company has an Azure subscription that includes a storage account, a resource group, a blob container, and the file share. A colleague named John Ross Max use of solitary uh, Azure resource manager ARM template to deploy a virtual uh, machine and uh, an additional Azure storage account. You want to review the ARM template that was used so it's after the implementation we want to see that history of ARM template so solution is given here you access the virtual machine blade okay uh, and uh, from the virtual machine blade we can see the deployment so uh, we want to remove the AR te ARM template being used so is that solution is meeting answer or not to validate the uh, answer we will go to uh, our Azure account let's quickly see here we do have one virtual machine created in resource group so uh, we have one resource group called rg2 it's having one virtual machine in it and it's having deployment step under the deployment we can see that the template information is already uh, you know or deployment information is available but if i uh, go as per the question if i go to a virtual machine blade uh, VM1 let's say uh, if I go here I cannot see any deployment uh, information or in deployment template information in this case uh, that means uh, the answer for this question is not correct so uh, that is uh, not the virtual machine blade rather it is the resource blade so um, this is no but it should be resource blade this is incorrect and uh, and i think by uh, having this question at the end uh, we can end this video here and we'll continue in next video from the question number 
to allow them. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and if you do have any question, also you can uh, post in the comment. Uh, please turn on the notification. I will be trying to create video on daily basis, at least five to ten questions on a daily basis. So uh, thank you very much again. Bye. -bye.